welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and today I'm gonna state the obvious. One of the most powerful scenes in Wakanda Forever was the climactic battle between Shuri and Namor. Are we calling him Namor? Everyone else in Wakanda was calling him yeah. Namor. I'll try it the other way and see how far I get. I know, I know. The final battle scene is always powerful in a Marvel movie, Whitney. And you are correct. But because I'm a huge nerd, I wanna to talk to you about why it was so cool and why we all loved it so much. This is easily in my top five favorite Marvel movies and TV series. And what we saw during the final showdown between the new Black Panther and the Feathered Serpent God is a huge part of why. Today, I'm gonna to break down this scene, including what Shuri and Namor saw in their visions, Shuri's journey towards spiritual awakening, and how she ultimately chose to follow in her brother's footsteps, leading with mercy rather than vengeance. It's no secret that Shuri is the closest thing to a Wakandan atheist we've seen in the MCU. She's known as the princess who scoffs at tradition for a reason, and her skepticism is a defining character trait in both Black Panther films. In the first movie, we saw her grow impatient with the formality of the Black Panther ceremony where M'Baku challenged her brother for the title. And her motto, just because something works doesn't mean it cannot be improved, is the perfect encapsulation of her dedication towards forward-moving progress. Where most Wakandans embrace the more formal aspects of their culture and beliefs, Shuri works to bring modernity to her people through innovation and invention. Unfortunately, despite her best efforts to recreate the heart-shaped herb in time to save her brother, T'Challa passes away, devastating Shuri. In the moments before her final attempt at printing a synthesized version of the glowing purple flower, she steps into a private cubicle to pray to Boss, bargaining that if the goddess allows her to save her brother, she'll never question her existence again. Although it isn't implicitly said in the movie, it's easy to imagine that Shuri lost what little faith she had in Boss after her desperate prayer went unanswered. T'Challa, on the other hand, was more devout and traditional than his sister. In Civil War, we hear him say this to Black Widow in the aftermath of his father's death. In my culture, death is not the end. It's more of a stepping off point. You reach out with both hands and bust and segment. They lead you into the green veld where you can run forever. And after seeing his father twice in the ancestral plane, we can reasonably assume that he maintained his belief in Bost in the afterlife for the rest of his time on Earth. When Ramonda asks her daughter to join her in the ritual of burning their mourning clothes from T'Challa's funeral, Shuri makes it clear that she doesn't really buy into the whole your brother is still with us even though he's no longer living thing. Despite Ramonda's steadfast belief that she was able to find her son in the breeze in the midst of her grief, Shuri disagrees. At this moment, Shuri truly feels that gone means gone. And more than that, she knows that if she truly allows the memory of her brother's loss to occupy space in her mind and heart, she'll end up burning the world to the ground. And that's a really honest depiction of grief. Sorrow and loss are so multifaceted, there's no one way or right way to experience it. Anger is a valid emotional response in the face of death. And here, Shuri is expressing that although she feels these feelings, she isn't allowing herself to act on them because she doesn't want anyone else to hurt the way that she does. She can't believe that her brother is still with her because she believes that death is the end. Later, when her mother dies at the hands of Namor, Shuri tells M'Baku that her heart was buried with her mother, the last person to truly know her after the deaths of her brother and father. When the two argue about whether or not to retaliate against Namor, Shuri emphasizes that because her mother is dead, so are Ramonda's dreams, hopes, and goals for her daughter. And it's not surprising that she feels this way. After taking the heart-shaped herb, it's not her brother, father, or mother that appears. It's her cousin Eric. As someone who already had shaky faith in the ancestral plane, the confirmation that her immediate family didn't come for her likely only solidified her belief that her mom's wishes for her no longer matter. Shuri's response to T'Challa and Ramonda's death is exactly the same initial reaction her brother had upon falsely learning that the Winter Soldier had killed his father. He tells Natasha not to bother trying to track Bucky down. He'd find him and kill him himself. And that's exactly what he tries to do at first. Black Panther tracks Bucky down and nearly succeeds in his mission before he, Cap, and Sam are stopped by Rhodey and Bucharest law enforcement. Like her brother, Shuri initially reacts to her mom's death by becoming hell-bent on vengeance, which leads us to the explosive fight between her and Namor at the end of Wakanda Forever. You don't have to be a super genius to realize that you're not gonna get another set of skin or a new head of hair anytime soon. You might as well take care of what you got, which means you should really get familiar with Geology. Geology is a 14-time award-winning personalized skincare company recognized in Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men Grooming Awards with over 6,000 five-star reviews. And they've recently expanded to offer products for pretty much whatever you need. If you need hair care, use Geology's Co-Wash, a specially formulated cream 
Skin Cleanser that removes buildup and cleanses the hair without the big lather or harsh ingredients of typical shampoo. And for the rest of your shower routine, you can use their body washes, which are free of harsh ingredients, smell great, and are reliable. And for after the shower, protect your skin from environmental stressors with vitamin C and E Ferulic Serum to keep your skin looking young and healthy. And then a bit of dermatologist tested aluminum free deodorant that quite honestly smells great. Right now for a limited time, Geology is hooking our audience up with an absolutely bonkers offer. If you use the code new rockstars, they'll give you an additional 70% off of their award-winning skincare trial set. This discount stacks on top of their current sale prices, and there's also an additional bonus offer on one of their brand new skin, hair, and body products of your choice when you add it to your trial. With the holidays right around the corner, Geology has you covered. Check out their awesome gift sets featuring all of your favorite Geology products. To get started, just click the link in the description, take a 30-second diagnostic quiz, and their team of dermatologists will design a personalized routine just for you that ships directly to your door. Now, let's talk about Namor's beliefs and how they differ and compare to Shuri's. Back in the 1500s, Spanish conquistadors attacked his mother's village, weakening their community with disease, stealing their resources, and enslaving their people. The Rain Beauty Chalk led their shaman to an underwater cave where he found a vibranium plant that would save their people, and each person in their village agreed to drink a liquid concoction that transformed them into mer people. The shaman convinced Namor's mother, who was pregnant at the time, to drink it too, and her newborn son became the first half-human, half-mutant citizen of the new underwater nation of Talokan. When his mother died, he attempted to fulfill her final wish to have her body buried on the soil of her homeland, but only found more war and inhumane treatment of his mother's people. In his heartbreak and anger, Kukul Khan enacted his revenge on the colonizers who destroyed the lives of so many. Ever since that moment, he's prepared his people for the surface world's return to once again steal their lives and land, remaining hyper-vigilant against outside attack for centuries. His faith in his people remained strong, but his distrust towards mankind never wavered before now either. Namor himself is a god to his people because of his mutant abilities. Although some parts of his origin are similar to the story of the first Black Panther, the biggest difference is that he was born with his powers, while each Black Panther is granted their strength from drinking the heart-shaped herb. Also, while Namor ages slowly due to his mutant genes, the Black Panther ages normally, can be fatally wounded more easily than the feathered serpent god, and will die after a seemingly average human lifespan. By the time Shuri and Namor finally battle each other one-on-one -on -one at the end of the movie, both of them are feeling the compounded pain and exhaustion of centuries of generational trauma. Both are seeking vengeance for the struggles and deaths of their ancestors, as well as harboring their individually complex feelings towards interaction with the world outside of Talokan and Wakanda. Although these two kick each other's butts within an inch of their lives, an interesting connection forms between them just before they ultimately agree to cease fighting. While stuck, Shuri imagines the voice of her cousin from her vision of their encounter in the throne room, and it's revealed that she told Killmonger that she would make Namor beg for mercy before she killed him in response. After regaining the upper hand against Namor, Shuri begins to see Namor's destruction of Wakanda in reverse, almost as if she'd taken it to heart when he told her that it could have all been different moments earlier. But Namor is also seeing these visions of the past, many of which parallel Shuri's own experiences with loss, grief, anger, and vengeance. Not only did they both grow up in advanced civilizations hidden from the rest of the world to avoid the same historic tragedies that befell their ancestors, they've each lost the people that they care about most and have been putting their heartbreak into action. This brief, empathetic connection allows Shuri to finally see her mother in the ancestral plane for the first time. Ramonda tells her daughter, show him who you are, which is the exact same thing she shouted at T'Challa during his challenge against M'Baku at the waterfall. Afterward, T'Challa found the strength to defeat M'Baku and ended up convincing him to yield by insisting that his people still needed him as their leader, which is also the choice he makes after learning that Zemo was the one who killed his dad. Instead of allowing Zemo to kill himself, he tells him that the living aren't done with him yet. Like her brother before her, Shuri listens to her mother, finally able to feel her presence. It's clear that Shuri feels closer to the power of the Black Panther and her spiritual connection to the ancestral plane in a way that she hadn't felt before. She insists that Namor yield, just as her brother had insisted of M'Baku before her, proving to herself that she's nothing like her cousin. When Killmonger fought T'Challa, he didn't hesitate to kick him off that waterfall to his death. But like her mother and brother before her, Shuri chooses to lead with mercy and forgiveness. She's even able to grieve her brother fully on the beach in Haiti, where she finally feels the connection that her mother described to her by the lake in Wakanda. Likewise, Namor is able to accept her offer, not only because she definitely has a very sharp pokey weapon caressing his jugular, but because he too wants to put a stop to the violence perpetuated by hatred and revenge. He sees his own mother reaching her hand out to him in a vision, as if she's offering him the choice to finally heal 
heal his own generational and ancestral wounds. Her deepest wish was to return to the surface world, and now her only son has finally found a human that he can trust to protect Holocon's secrets alongside them. In the same way that Shuri's faith was restored in the Black Panther, Namor's faith in humanity has taken a tiny baby step towards restoration too. Don't get me wrong, these little mermaids will still you up, and I would not go down there without an invitation from the Submariner himself. But any alliance takes some level of trust in order to form, and he strongly believes that a friendship with Wakanda will benefit Talokan in the long run. These are just some of my thoughts on Shuri and more spiritual awakenings and journeys of faith, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at WhitneyPuppy, follow New Rockstar, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love, and thanks for watching. Bye!